See, this uh, All India Kisan Sabha has been continuously fighting, as you know, in Maharashtra, all over the country. Mm -hmm. uh, these long marches, now, this is the fourth one mm -hmm. in the last five years. 2018 was the first iconic one. Then 2019, again in 2023, last month. And now again 2023, April. Uh, three, four major issues are there. First issue is concerning land. Most fundamental issue of land, land rights. Now, in this issue, there are this thing concerned with the implementation of the Forest Rights Act for tribals and also for non-tribals. Then there is the, this has not been implemented. In spite of all these marches, the state government and the administration, which is actually charged with the responsibility of implementing that act, not at all being done. So there's a huge amount of uh, this thing regarding that, anger regarding that. Second thing is that uh, there is what is called as temple trust lands or inam lands or waqf board lands here. And that is not a small amount. About 6 lakh acres of land in Maharashtra is controlled by these temple trusts, waqf board, etc. Now what is happening is, it is the working peasants who are actually tilling that land. But none of this land is on their names. It's on the name of the work board or the temple trust, Devasthan, what you call. So as a result, the same thing that FRA, what happens? It's not in your name. You don't get any government schemes benefit. You don't get any loans from the banks, cooperative societies, nothing. And therefore, you are absolutely hamstrung. So that is the one thing that happens. Then there is the question of uh, various pasture lands, grazing lands. Some places in Thane Palgar, there is also old landlord lands. The landlords were thrown out after the great Adivasi Warli revolt in 1945. So the land is on the names, I mean, of the landlords even now. But it is being cultivated by the Adivasi peasants. But the names are the same. And those are absentee landlords. They have gone to Ahmedabad, Surat, Bombay. All this. So that thing should come on the names of the cultivating peasants. That is the main issue. Then there is the last question about land acquisition. Land acquisition is going left, right and centre in many places. Uh, the 2013 uh, Land Acquisition Act, which was a very good advance over the earlier acts, uh, that is not at all being implemented. Compensation is not being given properly to the farmers. So that is another major bone of contention on which many farmers have come here also. You know, land acquired for new international airports, highways, uh, railway freight corridors, <coughs> all this. So that is one major issue. So all these are land issues which uh, we are this thing. Basically, this they don't want to touch the land issue because the real reason is that they somehow want to give up that land to the corporate lobby. Once you make all this land in the name of the cultivating peasants, whether tribal or non-tribal or anybody, then the government, I'm just telling you the thing, thinking of the government, why it is not implementing all this time. They want that land to be given to the corporate lobby. That is the main thing and that is what we are striking against. Uh, you got the point, no? that we don't want this, we want the actual peasants to get uh, masters of the land. The second very important point is regarding the MSP, which as we know is a countrywide issue. It was raised in this one year long farmer's struggle uh, for the repeal of the three farm laws. That was demand number one. Demand number two was MSP at the rate of one and a half times the cost of production. That was the Dr. M. S. Swaminathan Commission recommendation. Now that is applicable now even for this March also. Thousands of farmers have come because they are not getting remunerative price for their crops. In March, this onion issue had become very burning in the long March where uh, we had taken out last month. Then the government had to give some 350 rupees uh, subsidy per quintal. So uh, all that happened. But then, uh, even then that issue has not been totally solved. But it's not just onion. It is cotton, it is soya bean, it is tur dal, it is also so many other crops, milk for example. So all these crops are also uh, under the scanner 
uh, their prices have gone down tremendously, just as you are saying, cotton. Last year was 14,000. Now it has come down to 7,000. So this is much less than the cost of production also. That is what, so I have been same thing. So that's why, and milk, etc., and many of these things is because of the import-export policies of the government, which are totally faulty. They want to import from foreign countries. They have reduced the import duties. Like, for example, wheat. Never it has happened. They have, the Modi government, has reduced the import duties on wheat to 0%, which has never happened before. So all these things they are doing. Milk now, they are including milk, dairy products, imports from New Zealand, Australia, USA, and so many other countries. So therefore, that is one of the reasons why the prices of the Indian farmers are going down. So this MSP struggle, which is a countrywide struggle, let me underline, but it has to be fought in every state. You know, it's that way. that's what is being fought in Maharashtra. That is the second major issue in this march. Third major issue in this is regarding the climate change in the last few years, we are seeing that there is unseasonal rains, hailstorms, drought, floods, all these natural calamities have been very much on the increase. You can see it actually in the last five to seven years. This climate change has had disastrous impact on the farmers and as a result of it, now for example, this year, even last year, the year before, from 2020, there has been this big scourge of unseasonal rains and hailstorms. Exactly when the crop is ready for harvesting, big rains come and the crops are destroyed. Farmers get no compensation, not from the government, not also from the crop insurance companies. So they are just uh, out on a stick, absolutely. What do you do? Because all your, uh, whatever your, this thing, cost of production, what you have spent on that is all finished and you are getting nothing in return. All your crop is also destroyed. So this is one very major thing. Last, this year also the same thing happened. Last year also same thing. So one major demand that in this March you are making is that give proper compensation for crop loss due to natural calamities. Crop insurance company, this whole PM Fasal Bima Yojana, it's a big hoax, big farce, absolutely. Because they are taking premium from the farmers, from the state government, from the central government. But when it comes to the loss for farmers, they are not giving farmers anything at all. So therefore, it is the insurance companies, corporate ones, which are gaining at the expense of farmers in natural calamities. So therefore, that's a very major issue. This is the third one we are taking up. Fourth one we have taken up in this long march and also in the last one in March. That is concerning rural workers. We believe in this worker-peasant alliance. Kisan Sabha, we believe in that. You must have seen in the 5th April rally in Delhi, uh, organized by the CITU, Kisan Sabha, Agricultural Workers Union jointly. So all red flags, but all different organizations. So we came together all over the country from right from 2018. We have been having big joint actions of workers and peasants. So here in this long march, we have taken up this very important issue of the rural workers, construction workers, ASHA workers who are women, uh, Anganwadi workers, midday meal workers, all these are women basically. So therefore, they are absolutely being shortchanged by the government, both the central and the state. They are being given a pittance as so-called wages. We are demanding that they should be uh, taken up as given recognition as full-time government employees and given the pay scales according to that. That the government never does. They are not even increasing. Now, as a result of the last long march in March, they had to increase Anganwadi wage by 1,500 rupees. That we could achieve last time, you know. But this time, we are still maintaining Asha, Anganwadi, midday meal, construction workers, mediclaim issue is there. They had a mediclaim policy earlier, the government stopped it, you know. So that is one thing, the housing question for construction workers. They are the ones who build all these buildings and they don't have a house to stay in themselves. So this is the whole situation, that whole rural workers thing. That also we have taken up in this last two long marches. So on these issues, we are 
absolutely clear that the government must bend and if it doesn't bend then this struggle will definitely continue that is the resolve of the all india kisan sabha <clears throat> see you are very right uh, it's not easy to organize such marches is absolutely not easy and now last two marches march and april now in full sun tremendous sun you know and there it's not easy to mobilize farmers but uh you see how we are doing it is because it's a very burning issue of the farmers for which they are coming themselves you understand otherwise they would not come had they not been really affected and especially the land related issues they are extremely important very close to the heart of the farmers even the msp issue or the crop insurance issue you know compensation issue all these you see on this uh we go out to the farmers we have meetings etc and we then they come in large numbers for example now in this uh, nearly 20 districts have been quite well mobilized in this march uh, the one accorded to loni uh, but of course there is a slight difference again see in the nasik to mumbai march in march uh, mainly it was the farmers from nasik district and then also from other districts were there that is last month in this march april uh, the lion's share of the mobilization in this march is from thane palgar and amandnagar district these are the two districts from where maximum farmers have come nasik farmers are naturally because they had taken part in a big way last month so every time they it's difficult for them to come so the other districts we mobilized this time thane palgar from where we are our mla we know nikole had come and he is there along with the march so uh, comrade jp gavit of course was there yesterday also he'll be there with us so all that was there these are the two districts but this march is in a way much more representative than the last month's march uh, because we had decided earlier see vidarbha districts are here marathwada districts are here western maharashtra districts are here konkan districts are here you know so the whole maharashtra is covered north maharashtra is here all all districts generally more than 20 districts are there you know which have come here uh, more or less but you see they are there very much represented as i told you thane palgar and amarnagar are the largest pune district has mobilized quite well it's very close by here you know so like this other districts also come uh, nasik of course is there but not as much as last time so that is the this thing that's how we mobilize and we go to them and say that if you want your issues to be solved you have to come yourself you know you cannot uh, send somebody you know in hindi they say na ki bhagat singh ka janm ho dusre ke ghar mein hum kapda sambhalte you know is prakar se it won't happen that way you have to actually struggle on your own and they have come this time one more improvement we have made after all one learns you know after every march and all after that last time nasik march we realized that on two days people had to walk for very long distances you know this time we have done so much that not more than 10 km stretch you know we are not kept in this march 10 km in the morning 10 km in the evening and in this uh, hot sun we are not marching at that time you know like from 7 to 11 one say this thing and then from 4 to 7 evening like that so that main sun ka thing that we are seeing that people don't march that we are making that big big improvement over the last nasik thing because after all these farmers are very valuable no and their lives are valuable their health is valuable so that is also the responsibility of the kisan sabha that nothing happens to them so all those uh, care we are taking in this march Uh, see to the government and to the people the message that we want to give is that people will not take injustice lying down and you see they have been taking it lying down for many years up to now but now we want to give that very strong message from the kisan sabha to the government and to the people uh, already that message was given in a big way of course in the earlier long marches we had given in the rajasthan mahapadav and in all their seeker and other very big struggles that our kisan sabha led in rajasthan that they have given 
in Tamil Nadu, in many states, Kerala, Bengal, you know, uh, Bihar, on land issues again. So all that has been given. But a major message was given by that one year long, huge and historic struggle in Delhi. Delhi farmers struggled for the repeal of the three farm laws. For one year, people sat, farmers from all over the country. Of course, North India was major, but it was fully supported by all over the country. I myself toured nearly about 10, 15 states at that time. And huge rallies of lakhs of farmers took place in Tamil Nadu, in Kerala, Karnataka, Maharashtra, you know, of course in Punjab and all but Bihar, for example, Bengal. So all these things, you see, this we want to show that we will now not take it lying down. And we are going to demand our rights. That is the message that we want to give. And the other message we want to give is that if you struggle, you will win. We won. Three farm laws had to be repealed. That's not an ordinary victory, you know. The MSP struggle is now on. Sayyutta Kisan Morcha is fighting even now. <clears throat> on the 30th of April, we are having a national meeting of the Sayyutta Kisan Morcha in Delhi <clears throat> to take the further steps regarding what's to be done regarding that national movement. So all this is now leading up to that. Finally, we say, we don't believe for a minute that the Modi government, which is totally betrothed to the Adanis and the Ambanis, there is no question of any change in that happening. You know, it cannot just be, because it requires them for their elections. It requires all that money. It requires all their media power, because all of them control everything. So they will never leave the corporate thing, and they will never take pro-people policies. The BJP government led by Modi, it's the RSS, now they are trying to give all, inject all communal poison just to maintain their power, etc. That we are seeing everywhere, the things that they are doing. The main message we want to give all over the country, from this march, from everywhere, all the struggles, the 5th April Delhi rally of the C2 Kisan Sabha Agricultural Workers Union, Sayukta Kisan Morcha, Central Trade Unions, all their struggles. That message we want to give to the country as a whole, that this government must be defeated in 2024. The, if this government continues, there is no chance of any of you getting justice. Then justice will go, justice in the sense, uh, undeserved justice will only go to the Adanis, the Ambanis, the corporates, both foreign and domestic. And therefore that has to stop. If this communal polarization and authoritarian attacks have to stop, there is only one way we can do it, through huge struggles all over the country and through all the opposition uniting together. We will have to see that in 2024, the BJP-RSS government led by Modi is defeated lock, stock and barrel and an alternative government with alternative policies which will favour farmers and workers, agricultural labourers, students, youth and women and all the other socially uh, backward sections of society, they will actually get justice. Those radically different policies will have to be followed. For that, an alternative government has to come to power, which will also defend secularism, which will also defend democracy. These are all casualties of the Modi government last nine years, and therefore this has to stop. Therefore, these struggles have to increase. and. Um, a political atmosphere uh, has to be built in the country to see that the BJP is thrown out lock, stock and barrel in 2024.